So if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan of the channel mixer in Darktable for making black and white images. But in 3.4, the channel mixer has been replaced with the color calibration module. It works similarly, but there are some differences. So I thought I'd spend some time today talking about how to set the color calibration module up to make black and white images. Let's take a look at some images in my library. I've picked a few images out here that I think will help us uh, understand how the channel mixer works when you convert an image to black and white and how adjusting each of the red, green, and blue channels can bring out textures and contrast in different parts of your image. So I think the first one we'll look at is uh, this, this guy here. And this image I think will work well for us to start to take a look at because it obviously has a nice mix of blues, reds, yellows and, and greens and uh, we'll get to see how the uh, the new color calibration module and the channel mixer functions within that module will help us make a black and white image here that um, can be compelling and have the level of contrast that we're interested in so this is actually a, um, a JPEG file so this was shot on an iPhone uh, so a rather old one as well, an iPhone 5, but it's still a pretty good image and uh, it certainly has colors in it and it certainly could make an interesting black and white image. So let's take a look at the color calibration module. So the color calibration module, uh, there's a lot of information that's been published about this and it's it's one of its functions is to replace or augment the white balance module to correct colors in, in your image but it also replaces the old channel mixer entirely. In fact, the channel mixer module is, uh, is deprecated and, and will still be there for images that were processed with it, but can't be used in, the, in new images. So color calibration is, is how we're gonna go about this. Now, to use color calibration for black and white, you see these tabs across the top of the module, and on the far right, you see a tab called gray. And gray is where we're gonna wanna be for um, making black and white images. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the amount of red, green, and blue input that comes into those channels. So I'm gonna turn the module on and down here is this box that says normalize channels now normalize channels is going to make sure that no matter what you do with the sliders the values of red green and blue always add up to one as a default that's where things are normally go so if i check that and i go in here and i crank red all the way up uh, we see that my my reds change as i as i adjust this but they don't change very much because I haven't done anything with any other colors. So now if I go ahead and turn my green all the way up, well, then the reds shift a little bit. And if I turn my blue all the way up, uh, the image changes again. But this isn't really an accurate representation because these are all at one now. And the truth of the matter is, is that this normalize button is back actually making them, making them all uh, about 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. It's, it's basically making a, a panchromatic image. If I turn red down to zero, then red is at zero, but blue and, gr and green are each actually at 0 0.5 because they're both at 0.1. I find this to be very confusing, and as a result, I don't use the normalized channels when I'm trying to make a uh, black and white image, right? So I'm going to uncheck black and white and then it's going to let me go crazy then if i turn red green and blue all the way up we see that the image gets very bright because i'm now essentially overexposing the image by increasing the amount of luminance that's coming from the red channel the green channel and the blue channel so let's put those all back down around uh, 0.3 And now it looks a whole lot like it did when we had normalized channels set and we pushed everything up to one. So this would essentially be a panchromatic image uh, that you would expect from a perfectly panchromatic film, right? It's going to take equal parts of red, green, and blue. Now, there are some film simulations that are built into the color calibration module. Among them is Fuji Acros 100. And if I pick Fuji Acros 100, we'll see that the settings 
are very close to panchromatic. They're very even across the board. Uh, Fuji Acros 100 is a, a panchromatic film. A lot of films are called panchromatic film, but they're not really. They have um, most black and white films have more sensitivity to blue light than they have to others. So, for example, if I pick Ilford HP5 and we look at the tones, I can see that the tones have have shifted slightly, right? Especially if a, we take a look at the sky area. So, if I go from Acros 100, you see the contrast in the sky between the sky and the trees. Uh, and then if I switch back to HP5, you can see the contrast change be between the sky and the trees. Um, the rest of our values, they don't change so much. The relationships between red and green are, are fairly close to the same, but blue uh, is, is pushed up. And you'll find that for the other film simulations that are in here as well. Delta 100 has slightly different values, but has the same shift toward blue. Uh, a lot of, as I said, a lot of panchromatic films are more blue sensitive. In any case, a lot of times when we're shooting colorful subjects with true black and white film, we use colored filters. And I like to be able to simulate the look of those colored filters in Darktable, at least as a starting point. It may not be my finishing point, but as a starting point. The old channel mixer had a number of colored filter presets built in, but the new color calibration module doesn't. So I've created several and we're going to take a look at those today. The way I've done that is by setting the red, green, and blue channels to appropriate values for the wavelengths that are absorbed and that pass through those filters. So you can find information online about black and white filters, the Rattan filter numbers, or Kodak filter numbers that'll tell you the wavelengths that pass through those filters. And you can also find some tutorials online that tell you how to use uh, Photoshop in order to, the channel mixer in Photoshop in order to make a black and white image. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of those here. We have a nice image with reds, greens, and blues, and we'll see what the effect of each of those is. So I've created a, uh, a preset for a red filter. Let's take a look at that preset first, right? So the red filter is 90% passing the red channel, 10% input from the green channel, and 0% input from the blue. So this is going to effectively darken my blues, darken the skies, and lighten the reds. So we, we see here that the, uh, that the reds on the image have, have gotten lighter. The, the contrast between those and the blues is not nearly as, as great as it appears in a color image because the color contrast between red and blue is extreme, but the luminance contrast between these two is, is not that great in this particular case. So the red filter, now this is a uh, you know, pretty classic black and white film look and you can push this even farther, right? Like if I wanna darken my skies, well, I can actually go in here to the blue channel and even though it's at zero, I can enter negative values. So if I wanna darken my blues, I can say minus 20. And that's gone, oh, it made it minus two. I should have said minus 0.2, minus 0.2. That's a little better. Okay, <laughs> so so let's uh, let's take a look at that. Let's go back to zero, and you see our you see the color of the sky that we have here, and then let's go back to minus 0.2. Now, of course, at this stage, my red, green, and blue values no longer add up to one. Some people get very concerned about that. I, it, I don't get concerned about it at all. My histogram is still all fully contained, so I don't have any lost highlights or lost shadows. I've got detail everywhere I want to have detail. If I zoom in on this, I've got detail in the grass underneath the uh, underneath the aircraft. So, you know, I could push it farther if I wanted my skies darker, but if the image starts to get too dark, like if I say I go to point, let's go to point four. Let's get a little minus 0.4. Let's get a little extreme. So now we've driven our sky very dark and maybe the image overall starts to look a little too dark now. And you can see I don't really have anything at the high end of the exposure. I could go in and increase the overall exposure or I could say, well, what do I want to lighten in this image? Let's, let's try lightening my greens. So I could put my greens up to 0.3. 
and it's going to brighten the image up, but still give me that dark, dramatic sky look. So the filter place is a starting point for me, not, not a finishing point. So what I did to create this was simply set the sliders where I wanted them. I set, let's just say, if I wanted a preset for a, a very dark red, I'd put this at 1. I might put green at 0. And I might put blue at minus, minus 0.2. And, and I might say this is what I want for a... Uh, strong red filter. I could even go higher. I can put red at 1.2 so that everything adds up to 1 and everyone's happy. So this gives me a darker sky. I can go down some more. Minus 0.4. If I really want to deepen those blues and I can make up for that with a little bit of green to lighten the image up overall. So now I've created, let's call this dark red. I'm going to come over here to the to the hamburger and I'm going to say store new preset and then I can name this preset deep red and now that preset will be available to me anytime anytime I want it if I want to push my skies a little bit darker um, so I've done that for the red filter the green filter uh, Ilford orthochromatic film which is blue sensitive film an infrared filter, uh, an orange filter, and a yellow filter. So uh, let's take a look at the green filter. There's a good bit of green in this in this image. All right, now for the green filter, we see that our reds have gotten quite a bit darker, which is because the red input is down to 0.1. There are some people that would uh, say that the strongest green filters are zero for red, but I, I left a little bit in there. And then we're at about 70, 20, for blue and green. Um, if I decrease the, the red down to zero and, and increase the green to 8.8, .8, then so the result here is that I've got a lighter trees, darker reds, lighter grass. The grass, of course, has elements of blue and green in it. It's, uh, you know, because the grass isn't pure green it's yellow um, and the leaves them the leaves have gotten lighter from where they were in the red filter we'll take a look at the combination or the comparison of those so I'm going to go back to my standard red filter and we see how much lighter the cowl of the aircraft is and these front panniers of the aircraft compared to the green filter where all that's gotten much darker. It's also brought out more contrast in the propeller here. The, all right, so similarly, I've got uh, yellow and orange, and these are just uh, settings, and I'll put a table up, or I'll probably put a graphic up directly on the video as I'm walking through this that shows what the value for each of the sliders is for each of these particular settings but the red the uh, yellow filter here is set for 60% red 28% green and 12% and blue and then I've got another for orange which is a little higher on the red uh, zero on the on the blue and a little bit lower on on the green and let's take a look at an infrared filter so the infrared filter is a good case of using values greater than one and less than zero so infrared is uh, 40 percent red it's 140 percent green and it's minus uh, 80 percent blue again adding all all the way up to one and you see that that has lightened the greens in the trees and the greens of the grass very significantly it's also lightened up the red on the cow and it's darkened our skies and started to introduce a, a good bit of noise into our skies which is which is pretty typical when you start to push these values especially since this is a JPEG image but you can use those values and this isn't true infrared this is as if you put an infrared filter onto regular black and white film which doesn't give you an infrared photograph but it does absorb the wavelengths other than infrared that are coming into the camera and being recorded by the film and last but not least would be a blue filter which I don't have in here yet so we're gonna go ahead and create a blue filter so blue filter 
let's reset this guy. A blue filter is going to be about 90% blue, so 0.9, about 10% green, and no red. And that's <clears throat> that's going to be uh, a standard blue filter, and you see we get a pretty dark image here. Our sky's gotten very light, but everything else in the image has gotten very dark. And we do have some highlights all the way up here in the histogram, but you can see it's pushed our histogram way down towards the bottom, the big the big hump of our histogram is is down at the bottom so you know we've got a lot of deep shadows now they're not completely black that detail is still there we've really brought out a lot of contrast in the uh, propeller we can really start to see the grain of the wood very nicely and uh, it's a dramatic image but it's not for everyone right it's not everyone's taste the reds um, have gotten very very dark and in, indeed and again, it's a starting point, right? If I like this, but I want to brighten the image up, I might start by just pulling up my reds until I get a brightness that feels a little bit more natural to me. And maybe somewhere around there, and then I could uh, even brighten my greens if I wanted to brighten the foliage in the background. And then if I need to, I can back off on the, on the blues if I'm starting to crush some of my highlights, especially since this is a... Uh, a JPEG image and I can't really recover that very easily so so there you go that's a that's the effect of a blue filter and I could now go ahead and and uh, create a new preset so if I put this back to 0.9 I put this at 0.1 and I put this at 0 and I'm going to go ahead and create a new preset and I'm going to call that blue filter So there you have it. That's how the color calibration module can be used uh, as a replacement for the channel mixer for making black and white images and adjusting the tonalities of each of the colors in your, in your image. Let's take a look at the effect of that on some other images. All right, here's another image that's got a lot of nice reds, greens, and blues in it. And we'll just quickly jump through our filter. So let's take a look at what happens with our blue filter. Okay, we've got very dark reds and greens, and we, in fact, lose contrast in those areas. So that's not a good choice for this image. Let's take a look at our red filter. And we've got our reds really lighten up. They, they start to pop against the greens, and our blues have darkened. So that could be a good choice as a starting point. Maybe a green filter could also be interesting here. Um, no, there, I see green filter. I'm losing the contrast between the leaves and the grass. Let's take a look at a yellow filter. Okay, yellow is nice. It's not quite as extreme as red, so I've got contrast between the leaves and the grass. My orange filter lightens it up just a little bit more and honestly I think the reds are so strong in this image that I would probably start with this uh, this orange filter and it wouldn't be my finishing point now then I would come in and create an RGB curve and make sure I have some pure whites in the image pull down my shadows and push up my highlights and there you go. That would be about as much processing as I would feel was necessary to do on, on this image. image. Now this one has a much more subdued color palette uh, and could be a good subject for black and white with the textures that are here. But there are some nice color contrasts between the moss color or the rusty greens, the, the reds and the blues here. So the original color of the car was probably blue. And, and we don't want to lose those. Um, and if we just go into, let's say, the saturation module, and we just pull the saturation down all the, way, <clears throat> all the way down to zero, we can convert this to black and white. And we haven't done too badly here. We still have a little bit of, of contrast and shades of gray here that we could work on a little bit with tone curves if we wanted to. But let's take a look at the color calibration module and see what we can do with some of the presets that we've created. And uh, let's start out with the red filter. 
Now, um, I'm expecting the red filter is going to lighten this area a little bit and, and maybe darken these blues a little bit. Well, let's, let's see what happens. And, and that's pretty much as predicted. So we, we do have a lighter bit of an area here and, and slightly darker shade of gray here. Overall, though, in my opinion, with the red filter, this image looks a little bit flat. Um, it doesn't have any, any real, real pop to it. Let's take a look at what some of our other options are. Let's try the blue filter because there's quite a bit of blue uh, in, in this scene. And, uh, yeah, this you can see right away the difference between the red filter and this. The image has a, a lot more character now. This... Uh, Here's something that I couldn't even see in the red version is this this gray area here. This red has deepened here and has really jumped out and we get a nice bright uh, outline around it. And we'll just flip back and forth here and compare. Let's go back to that red filter. And if you look at this area with the red filter in this area, you have much more soft transitions between the, the, the grays and the blue filter uh, has really... Uh, really harsh transitions and brings out a lot of texture and then if I went in and and used the contrast equalizer I could probably make this thing even more grungy if you will um, but I'm, I'm I pretty much like the way this looks now I'm interested though like what let's take a look at our infrared filter which will be really the polar opposite of our of our blue filter to an extreme degree um, yeah so this this works too right it's it's brightened the image overall and some of the contrast is a little bit different, a little bit lower in some spots, uh, but in other areas it's, it's brought out some new textures, right, where we had some, some colors that were close together. And, and I like what it's done in, in the grassy area here and how it's brightened up the overall image. Um, looking at a yellow filter, I don't expect to see very much. <clears throat> That's going to be pretty similar to the, to the red in this case, a little bit slightly more subtle. Orange filter. And very little change from from the yellow or the red. Let's take a look at a green filter and see what that does. Uh, that does bring out a little bit of this texture back into to this part of the car, uh, but really I think the blue filter is is the winner in this case. We'll jump to blue again. I like what it's done now. You know, if if you feel that the image is a little bit too dark now, you could very quickly make an RGB curve and just bring up the shadows a little bit to to brighten the overall image but I think a slightly darker take really suits this image pretty well and we have a lot of good contrast we've got some bright whites and some deep blacks but we haven't uh, lost anything if we look at our overexposure indications um, you know we're just sort of touching the edges in a few of these places and and I'm okay with that. This is nice because it's really given us good separation, even in this this door here, which honestly, in color, um, it, it doesn't look like there's a whole whole lot of tonal variation there. But there's enough, right? There's enough variation to to bring it out, and 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 something where black and white increases that contrast over the color contrast that was pretty minimal. So that's going to do it. There's a little walk through on how to use the new color calibration module in the same way that you could in the past use the channel mixer for your black and white images. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time.